Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This week's video, we're doing a bit of Astro again. We're, it was gonna be beautiful Milky Way. Everything was gonna be just perfect, except for clouds. And uh, yeah, so we plan beat it. Uh, we're hoping it was gonna be patchy and we'd get a bit of Milky Way coming through the clouds. It didn't eventuate. Then the light pollution reflected off the clouds. One of those nights where we just had to uh, come up with something different and it actually worked out pretty well. So we sort of went down the avenue, let's shoot some nightscapes, and I got a couple of really nice shots. I'm really happy with how they turned out. I thought the night was gonna be a write-off. Uh, I didn't do any video walking over and all that because of the, I, just, I just wasn't really, I just didn't think it was gonna happen. And uh, just one of those videos where I think it proves that no matter what, just go and do it and and you never know what's going to happen once you get there once you start taking photos you might see something that might change your perception and then give you something awesome so we're going to shoot into lightroom we're going to look at the before and afters of each of the photos that i've selected and then i'll show you all the photos at the end with a lovely little tune to make you just chillax out and relax for the afternoon okie doke let's get started let's hit that intro Okay guys, we're gonna dive straight in here on the MacBook and get into Lightroom. We're gonna go through what I've got. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven photos. Not that seven, but this seven. <laughs> seven photos that I've selected that I wanted to show you that I'll come up pretty happy. I didn't take a heap. Um, we're really after that one composition with the Milky Way in the background done all the all my work that I normally do, my photo pills. Um, I knew there was gonna be possibly clouds and that was always gonna be sort of in the back of our mind, we hoping it was gonna be thin and patchy and just give us like half an hour, an hour. Um, and then I went, went on the Windy app and it was I think it was from like nine till 12 o'clock. There was that three or four hour gap where it was supposed to be clear. Um, unfortunately, I think, because Pilbara is such a big area, it's hard to get accurate data just for this location. So it was one of those things, well, you know, it was patchy and you'll see it in the photos. There's some patchy there and you can see the stars, but it was big, thick cloud, that mid-level, mid-range, high-level cloud. And it was just a little bit too much to be able to suck a bit, of, suck that uh, Milky Way out of the, the uh, night sky. But it worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy. I uh, had the six, Sigma 16 mil lens on. Uh, my favorite lens, it's the 1.4, so it's just perfect for Astro shots on the M50. Um, and yeah, well, let's get stuck into it. This is the first shot we're looking at. You would have seen this photo before in a couple of times I've shot. And this one, actually, this is the hill, the Knoll, I guess, Knoll Hill, whatever you like to call it. Benny came out in his first ever Astro shoot, and we were at the base of this shooting up, and we got some really nice Milky Way shots. Clear night. Uh, Wet season, we start to get the clouds rolling in and we get a little bit more. Generally, it's super mega clear, which is terrible for daytime shooting. Um, but this is one of those occasions where we wanted those clear night, that clear night, and we got the sort of semi thunderstorm rain clouds in there. So you can see how sort of thick and they just, it was just too many of them and they just, the wind wasn't blowing enough to blow them away, unfortunately. So you can see here, uh, this is the original photo. Now, it, uh, it looks, as you can see, it looks pretty thick down there, but I was pretty happy with how it all come up. Um, that's at six seconds, 1.4, 3200 ISO. So, you know, it gives me a fa fair bit of detail, not a massive amount of detail in that foreground. I probably should have spent a little bit more time getting some detail down here and maybe going up an aperture and going like a 30 second or a longer one to really soak that up and then just merging them in. But I tend not to do that on my Astro stuff. I'm not sure, I, again, I'm no expert, I'm learning, um, I'm getting better and I'm pretty happy with most images. I don't want them to be really, I'd, I'd love to be them perfect. If I get that perfect location and that perfect time and everything comes together, I'll definitely be trying to do everything I can. But um, this one, as I said, it, I just wasn't feeling it at the start, but by the end of it, it was really good. So as you can see, not too bad, it looks a bit thick. You can see a little bit of stars 
we're poking through the inside of the clouds. And then once I've cleaned it up over here, uh, it come up pretty darn good. And I didn't do too much. I've got a, uh, a couple of filters on there. I did a little bit of dehaze in around here. Some, I added some texture and some whites into the clouds just to sort of make them pop and just give them a little bit of structure, a um, little bit of texture. And I did some sort of light painting down here on the landscape. So all these bright areas, I just give a little bit of up the exposure. We don't have dodge and burn anymore in Lightroom. They don't have that anymore. I'm not sure what happened there. So all I did was just add a little bit of exposure, just pumped it up a little bit and just come through and I just touched up some white areas any sort of highlight areas that come through on that on that ground and sort of just make them just get that little bit of depth and to add a little bit of structure to it. And I think it's come up pretty good. It's a nice shot. That cloud cloud and that mountain, the knoll and the foreground are probably the two so that want that knoll sort of to lead up to and then the clouds, that the beautiful big thickness of the clouds, that was sort of the idea of, of that one. But um, look, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out and it's a nice photo. And pretty good. A little bit of crop on there. I think it was just a 16 by 9 or a 16 by 10, but uh, it's come up pretty good. So here you can see I've got a little bit of crop on this one. I was just waiting for spaces where the clouds would sort of break, and I was trying to get a shot where, you know, just, just enough space in there where I could get through and then get the Milky Way. The Milky Way was over this sort of area here coming across. So that's what I was sort of hoping. I just wanted this area to clean up maybe have some clouds in the background. That probably would have added a little bit something to it and been a bit special. But uh, yeah, just this whole area here, I needed some more, just that to just clear out and it would have been magic. We would have got a Milky Way coming across. The Galactic Center would have been, rough, was I think roughly about there. Um, and look, that would have been perfect. And then that, but I did get some good ones. Again, I used just a little bit of the haze tool I uh, just painted in that there, added some texture and some color onto that. Um, the foregrounds come up really nice. Uh, that is the 3200 again, uh, six seconds, 1.4 on the Sigma lens. <clears throat> Plenty of detail. It does get a bit noisy at night. The M50 struggles a little bit with that night shooting in regards to that. Uh, once you get past 1600, you, you tend to get a little fair bit of noise in there, no matter really what you do. Uh, it does struggle a bit in that regards. You can see the difference if you go over to, when I was going to check out Benny's photos on his Z6, I think he was getting up to like 60, 80,000 and was still crystal clear where I, 3,200 sort of, it's not too bad. Um, depends how much you pixel peep, but it, uh, it it's still pretty darn good. There's still a bit of detail, but you can just see that noise sort of there. It is there. There's, there's not much I can do about that. Um, it's, it's definitely not a pixel peeping camera, but it, uh, it's, I think that's turned into a good photo. Bit of a crop. I think that's a six by four from memory, and uh, I think that's come up good. Just, it just again, just shows that, that knoll and a little bit of cloud. It's not a beautiful astro photo um, like I would have loved to have got, but it, uh, it I think it's still a nice nice little photo and I think, think it's come up pretty good. Okay, so just another one, and this was probably one of the better ones for the clearing. So I had a, uh, a lot, of, lot of space here, but it was still sort of that, it wasn't that thick cloud over here, but it was that thin sort of high level, wispy sort of stuff that was slowly, slowly building up into uh, this sort of cloud and you had these patches patches around with with that cloud there that sort of were fa fantastic to be part of the photo but yeah just there's just a little too much in this area here but again look come through you can still see a fair bit of stars even down on this one here you can see uh, the stars are shining through it just wasn't enough so close so close and this is where that Milky Way was coming through that area there. It's, and that cloud was just, just sitting in the wrong spot. It was really, really, really no much fun for me. I can definitely tell you that. I was uh, <laughs> really just come, please just give me just give me 10 minutes of just no cloud in this zone here. And it would have been just magic. Uh, cloud up here 
and then that Milky Way would have been just basically like that uh, across there, it would have been just sensational. But again, I think it's come up good, nice clear foreground, just a lovely photo, great, great Instagram photos, and I think they'll come up good. It does show the beauty of the Pilbara, uh, nasty, harsh, desolate place that I walk through constantly uh, and get spin effects to death. But uh, when you have a look at it from a, up high and afar, and it's the beauty is the more and more I'm here, the more and more I really appreciate that natural beauty. So it's very, very cool. And it, just look at another photo, it shows off just how amazing this place is. So Benny, he was here, he's on his Z6, he's over there. That's our stores section for the mine where they have all the parts and everything. So massive amounts of light. You can see here on the clouds here. That's the mine, all the mine light pollution and the camp, and that's reflected up off those clouds and it gave it a fair bit of orange. And then here's the finished photo after I've had a bit of edit. A uh, little, dropped it down, I think it was a 16 by 10 because I was trying to keep this beautiful little clear section of stars in. I wanted to sort of keep waist height of Benny, uh, keep him in there sort of waist height and show off this sort of spin effects on the knoll we're on. And I think I'm pretty happy. This is probably one of my favorite photos of the night. I guess probably because it's got that foreground and it's telling the story about what we're trying to do and it shows off, uh, I guess the, it shows the desert, it shows life, us, and that interaction between the two of us, between nature and uh, us as a whole. And sort of, and then everything, and that's this beautiful light, I guess, shining off. So I think that worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy, pretty wrapped with that photo. I think it's a nice, nice little perler, and it's come up good. Now it's, um, you can see in here, that's probably one of the clearest sections I had. And then the the comparison over here, what it comes up, and again, a little bit of de hay, de haze to de, de haze. <laughs> Terrible. A little bit of dehaze tool, just just painting it in, trying to clear it up. Put some texture. You can see the texture. Add a little bit of texture on the clouds. Most of that's just painting it in. Um, for the foreground and the top ground, I was just using um, these splits of uh, this sucker here and just cutting across it, and then sort of adjusting for night, and then then adjusting for the ground. Do that first, and then I'll come through and do a little paint afterwards to get those finer details but uh, you can see the difference between before and after and that again see that one's at 1600 so again that's probably you see there it's just a lot better for the noise when you get down to 1600 from that 3200 with the m50 so it makes a big difference and i think that's that sort of that between 1600 and 3200 is that sort of sweet spot on the m50 um doesn't matter really what lens I use. The Canon lenses are the, pretty much the same. This Sigma lens is like, you can't fault this lens. It's probably the best lens for the M system. It's very hard to beat. So it's definitely uh, not the lens's fault. It's just that poor little APS-C sensor is just struggles a little bit in the low light. So, but I think that's come up really, really good. Okie doke, next is, next up, so this one here is doo -doo -doo -doo, another 1600er. Yep, 1600 ISO, um, 20 seconds. So I give it a bit longer, trying to get as much light as I could in, um, and just seeing, in, and just here, this section here, that's just that Milky Way. So you can see, I could, I could see it with my naked eye, just the camera just couldn't get through that cloud. But this, you can barely see a little shape here, and that's that Milky Way, and that's sort of where it was gonna come through, around this area, and sort of arch over here, so it, uh, and it's probably a little bit easier, let's see, just there, so you can see that's part of the galactic core there. So I was, we were so close to getting like some really trick shots, and it just, uh, didn't matter, We as I said, we waited, for, I think we were up there probably two, three hours, and it just wasn't coming and it just started getting thicker and thicker and this cloud got a little bit thicker. So what do you do? Um, couldn't stay up there all night, but um, yeah. So we were pretty happy. Again, I think this is probably 
better with the 20 seconds. You can see the difference, even just there, that, uh, that texture, the noise, everything clears right up and uh, it's come up really good. You can see the details in that rock there and then you can see the little bit of clarity in the back there. So it's come up really, really nice. That one, it's like, it's just beautiful. It's gorgeous country. And I think that even then, again, I just did a little bit of light painting, uh, dehaze tool. I come through, through all this area, cleaned it up, a little bit of texture, a little bit of white, just painted that on the clouds just to make them pop and give them a little bit of depth, I guess. Um, that was the, the idea behind that. And that's probably the best land, the land, best landscape one, I guess, of the lot because that 20 seconds, just that little bit different. Um, and that 1600 too makes a massive difference. So you've just got to get out there, try all your different levels and until you find something that just sort of suits. And the best thing, uh, and I guess the problem is, is with film, the old film days, when I used to do it, if you didn't get it right, well, that was it. You'd have to go back a whole other day. You'd only have one roll, two rolls maybe. And if you didn't get in that 24 shots or whatever, that would that would be it. Digital. I got a 64 gig card. I can just keep pumping on that until it's full. That's a heck of a lot of photos. Um, so yeah, you just keep shooting and keep trying different things and you can worry about it after the fact. Um, it, as long as you just try everything and just keep going, you'll definitely come out on top. So that one's come up pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a beautiful photo and it just, that's the one there that's just got the little hint of what we're after. As you can see, I just wanted that come through for just a little bit too much haze here. If that had been clear all the way through there, then we would have definitely had a Milky Way coming across. It would have been fabulous. <laughs> Whatever, fabulous. I don't even know what that is. Okay, doke. Next one is. So you can see here. This again. You can just see that on once it's cleaned up, that Milky Way just sort of sneaking through. But this one here, the difference being is that's six seconds. So that's your, uh, in photo pills, you've got your 20 seconds, which is your normal 500 rule. And then you've got the, the new technical one that, that normally works out really well. But being with that cloud and that haze, the difference is you go back to that last one and you can see that's the difference compared to what you've got over here. So you get 20 seconds, just enough to drag a little bit more light through those clouds, through that thin, thin cloud layer. And that gives, let, let me get a bit more of the night sky, but still gives me that texture of the cloud. So it, uh, it doesn't make a big difference. So you can see that there, it's still a hint there, but yeah, that last one was probably the best one. And then with that, the clouds are pretty much stuffed around and got us and we were sort of that. So I started, uh, Benny hadn't done any light painting, so we got got the loom cube out. And we were doing a bit of this and that and running around the old normal Instagram shots and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, I think I've come up with a little bit of a good one. It, um, so there's the photo I got Benny to take of us, which came up good. And here's the final product. Very nice. Very cool. Very Instagrammy. <laughs> <laughs> I do say very Instagrammy. Um, yeah, and I did here, I did a bit of light painting here. So I come on here and I went negative haze, uh, negative dehaze on this. Just And what that did is sort of give that light beam a bit more texture shooting up so you can actually see it. So you see here, you can sort of see it around here, but then it sort of disappears into the clouds. So by using the negative dehaze and I just light, just made the circle big and then I just sort of painted it on lightly and just sort of give it like that triangular color so it gives it that little beam I guess off uh, here I come through and again a bit of texture there and I went the negative texture to soften those clouds up and then I put the uh, more texture in on this side so it sort of shows that the lights beaming and highlighting it so you can see more and then off to the side, it should be a little bit softer. That was the idea, um, and that's sort of what I did. And then I just did some highlight painting, some, a little bit of exposure painting down here, and then with the spin effects down here at the bottom. So I'm pretty happy with that. That's a, a good little Instagram, you, you, I guess your standard sort of uh, loom cube, light painting sort of Instagram shot. 
but I think it came up pretty well and I'm pretty happy with how that all went. And that's about it. So um, yeah, so what I'm gonna do is uh, right now we're gonna I'll run through and just play the all the clean photos up and just give them in a bit of a run for you so you can see them nice and big if you wanna pause them and check them out, do a little bit of pic pixel peeping in there. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. A little bit something different. Again, I think it's a good way to sort of don't ever think that it's a blowout and you just walk away from it. Go and keep fighting the fight. <laughs> uh, just keep shooting. Look for something. Look at it from a different perspective, I guess, is the best thing. Don't, if you can't get that astro shot, uh, try a nightscape. If you can't get a, a nice landscape shot, try a macro shot. Get your drone up, do some droning. Uh, there's always a different way. I don't think any day is a write-off. As long as you're out there shooting, it's a good day. And I had a I had a ball. We had a great chat, and we we had a lot of fun doing it. Especially when we we're playing with the loom loom cube up there and uh, just running around and acting like uh, teenagers. So that was that was a bit of fun for us uh, and a little something different. So hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you enjoyed this and more stuff like this, and you haven't watched any of the videos, uh, the old subscribe button down there. That would be tickety boo i would much appreciate that and uh, if you hit the bell every time i do one of these crazy things i will uh, it'll let you know google's pretty cool like that and i'm very cheap it's free forever <laughs> oh probably not you do need a google account uh, so they're probably tracking you and you're gonna have to look at all those ads but uh hey it's still better than normal television <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Radio, we'll see you on the next video. And if you haven't already, uh, come and check us out on another day, another vlog. Monday to Fridays, tech news, reviews, all that sort of fun stuff. Uh, and it's a live, sh or not a live show, but it's live recorded and whacked up every Monday to Friday. Cool. Radio, guys, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks. The last drink was the last drink You make it hard to leave We're telling secrets in the dark while Drink a whiskey need I would fall in a second if you let me Cause you're all that I want, could you let me in? The last drink was the last drink But I don't wanna leave I wanna get closer Don't want this night to be over Back to my place Cause I don't wanna waste no precious time So let's go back to my place If it's only for tonight, let's make it count I love it, how your touch feels I love it, how you look at me in my place No, I don't wanna waste no precious time You said the last Telling secrets in between the sheets I don't want you to leave I would fall in a second if you let me Cause you're all that I want, could you let me in? The last drink was the last drink But I don't wanna leave I wanna get closer Don't want this night to be over I wanna get closer, it's not over Yeah, we could go back to my Go back to my place 
Cause I don't wanna waste no precious time So let's go back to my place